This is an overview of the XAir app, available for iOS and for Android. It's to control a Behringer XAir series mixer, in this case the XAir 18. So we're looking here uh, at, at the view that we've got. Over here on the right you can see a number of buttons which can change our layer. And the layer is what you're looking at on the left part of the screen. So right now we're on the layer channel 1 through 8, and so we see sliders for channels 1 through 8. Uh, and so you can see here on each channel we've got uh, our pan left right, our scribble strip, uh, which we can customize to be the name or instrument that the person is playing, our solo button, our slider, which can increase the level in the left right mix at the moment, uh, and then the value that the uh, uh, slider is currently set to, and then at the bottom we've got our mute. So you can mute a channel, solo a channel, pan it left to right, or raise the volume in the left in, in the left right main mix. Uh, on this particular layer. We're going to be looking at more layers in just a second. All right, now we're looking at our second layer. You'll notice that now the channels 9 through 16 layer is highlighted, and we have channels 9 through 16 here instead of channels 1 through 8. And so if we want to adjust channels 1 through 8, we go to the, the first layer. If we want to go to channels uh, 9 through 16, we go to the second layer. And the look, layout looks very different, so you need to pay attention down here at the bottom to which channels are being presented. Uh, but if you've got everything customized at the top on the scribble strip, it should be fairly obvious what it is that you're looking at. And again, you want to see here that it says left, right, mix right here. This is very important, and as we go on, you'll want to be paying attention because it's very easy to get confused. It's a very compact uh, application that allows you to view a lot of things simply and easily. But because it's so layered, uh, you really need to remember where it is that you are and be aware of what it is that you're changing because the same set of sliders changes a whole bunch of different things. And so you've got to be aware of where you are. Now we're on the third layer, which is our auxiliary uh, and effects. So the, the first slider that you see here is the line in. So that's uh, line 17 and 18. Uh, which are the stereo ins uh, for putting in a computer or uh, some sort of uh, a device like an mp3 player or uh, a phone or something like that. And then we've got the returns from our effects channels. And so I'm not going to go into great detail about what all of these mean. Uh, I've got videos uh, describing the uh, main program available for PC or Mac. And that's where most of most of the information is that you're going to get on how to use these things. I just want to make sure that on the app, once you've watched those videos, you're aware of what's here and available. Moving down, now we come to our effects sends. So these are the effects channels, what's being sent to them, and our main left right level. So here we can adjust uh, what the, the main left right is as it goes to the main speakers. Next we have our DCAs, and these are our digital control amplifiers. So by using these, we can assign particular channels to one of these four DCA groups, and then we can raise or lower the audio level of all of those various channels at the same time using the one slider. So you might assign all of your vocals to DCA1, all of your instruments to DCA2, and then maybe just the drums to DCA3. And so uh, by using one slider, you can raise or lower all the various mics that you might have on the drum kit, all as one cohesive unit. And in the same way, you can raise or lower all of your guitars, keyboards, uh, bass, all the rest of that with just one slider. Very useful. And finally, on the right-hand side at the bottom, we have our buses. So we've got buses one through six. So this is where if your monitors or... Uh, hearing assist systems or recording. Uh, these are the masters for each of those individual buses that can go out somewhere other than the main left right speakers. Now we're back on channels one through eight and we've got the fine button depressed. Let's say that you're moving the slider up and down and you can't quite get it to where you want. Uh, your finger is too big or you're just not getting the sort of control that you want. By pushing the fine button, it refines your movements uh, and makes the movement of the slider up and down 
uh, more granular. And so you can dial in a little bit more carefully. You'd have to move your finger from bottom to top several times to get the slider all the way up and down. Instead of when the find button is off, you can uh, drag the, uh, the, the, the slider exactly where you want it to go. So this gives you greater control. This is what comes up when we hit the mute button. Uh, this window has a number of different controls. Mute lock means until it's deselected, you can't change any of the mute settings. Here we've got unmute all, uh, which means that everything would be live. Mute all, which means everything would be off. And then our four mute groups. And so each of these, you can assign various channels to one of these four uh, mute groups and you can mute multiple channels at the same time. So just like the DCA groups, you might want to put all of your vocalists on one mute group, all of your instruments on another mute group, and be able to very quickly and easily uh, manage uh, those sorts of situations. Uh, and for me, it makes sense to, to make the channels assigned to your DCA groups and the channels design, uh, assigned to your mute groups the same so that it's clear to you what you're muting uh, and what you're adjusting with the, the DCA groups and the mute groups. All right. Now we're on channel one through eight still, but now we have the send fader button selected. And this is where things get confusing because now for the first time up here, we don't have main left, right. We have bus one slash bus two. So the sliders look exactly the same as they did before, but we are no longer adjusting the main mix we are now adjusting either bus one or bus two. And to figure out which bus we're adjusting, we need to look down here at this button with the drop down arrow. So once the send fader button is selected, whatever is selected on the button below that's the drop down is what we're going to be adjusting with our sliders. So this is what happens when you click that drop down button. Now we have a list and we can choose bus one, bus two, effect send one. There's a whole list of options and you can scroll through them as to what you want to adjust. And so uh, whether we're adjusting channels one through eight or nine through 16, this is looking at what is going to each of these individual buses. So if you wanted, for example, uh, your monitor, which is bus one, uh, you wanted more of channel two in that monitor. This is how you would do it. So if you wanted uh, channel one to increase on bus one, you'd select over here on the right channel one through eight. You would depress the send fader button and you would select bus one on the drop down. Then you would raise the slider on that particular channel. And that is not going to affect the left right mix at all. It's not going to affect what's coming through the main speakers. Instead, that is going to change what goes to the monitor speaker, which is attached to bus one. This is where it gets confusing because the action of moving that slider up is the same as what you're going to do for the left, right. But what is listed here is vitally important. And so you can adjust on channel one, what's going to bus one, what's going to bus two, what's going to affect send one, what's going to affect send two. And so with all of these, uh, you can switch around what it is that those sliders control. And so it's vitally important that you understand what you've done in terms of selecting what it is that those sliders control. So now you see over here that I've selected bus six. And up here is listed bus six. So this is not the sliders for the main left right view. If I raise this slider up, that is the amount of channel one that is going to bus six, not to the main left right speakers. So anytime that you change things and nothing seems to be happening, check whether or not you've got the send bu fader button pushed down and which of these controls it is that you're actually looking at. Now, because we have the send fader button down and FX send one is selected, you see up here FX send one, very important to be paying attention up here. Now increasing the slider is going to increase the amount of whatever effect one is that we have selected, increase the amount of that that's present in the channel. 
Finally, we move to our bus master, which is a layer just like you have over here. So just like when you're on channel 18 and you move to channel 96, channel 18 deselects. When you move to bus master, any of these that are selected are going to deselect and you've just got a single slider here. And that slider is whatever you've got here. I don't understand exactly why they put this bus master in because why wouldn't you just go to bus if you want to do one of the bus masters or go to effect send or DCA. For some reason they put this in, it's not entirely clear to me how this is useful. So if you select bus master and then select from the drop down menu, the single master of whatever it is that you've selected uh, here is going to appear and you can adjust that master uh, on its own. So here you can see I've got bus master selected and I've got bus six on the drop down. So it's bus six that you're modifying over here. So if for some reason you really need to focus and concentrate and you want just one slider, this is the way to do it. Now we're going to look at some of the controls up along the top. So we're going to start over here uh, with this little graph and work our way backwards this way. So here you've got the first view under that little graph that we looked, like, looked at in the last slide. And this is uh, all of your meters. So here's channels 1 through 16, uh, the, the level that's going to appear when there's signal going through one of those first 16. Here's the amount that's going through the effect sends and the effect returns. Here's your six buses. Here's your left, right, and your solo. Here's the personal monitoring system. Here's what's coming through the computer and back again. Here's your gain reduction, here's your uh, dynamics reduction, uh, and on the buses, the gain reduction. So in one snapshot view, it gives you uh, all of your levels. And so if you're having trouble figuring out where you're having problems with there being too much signal coming through a particular channel, just come here and it'll give you a, an overview of where all of your signals are going. The second thing under that graph is your real-time analysis. And so this is going to be a graph of how the signal that's coming through a particular channel is spread across the spectrum. And so here you've got your source. You can select channel one. Uh, you can select one of the buses. You can select one of the DCA groups. You can select your main left-right mix. And so you can uh, decide whether you want that pre-EQ or post-EQ. Uh, and so here you can uh, see a, a very detailed view of exactly how any particular part of the sound uh, is represented on the spectrum, whether you've got too much bass, too much treble, uh, whether any of the individual uh, uh, frequencies are problematic, you're going to be able to see uh, right here where feedback is occurring on a particular channel. Very useful thing. So now I've changed the view to left, right. Uh, I've got it on pre-EQ and I've adjusted the decay uh, so that when uh, the, the sound goes up, it's going to mark the peak and then wait a minute before that drops down again. So there'll be a slight uh, hang time. Uh, and so you can see the overall pattern over a few seconds. And so if there's a, a brief uh, problem that happens, it's going to hang there for a second uh, before it comes back down. If you want to change any of the settings on your effects, you'll come to the effects area. Uh, there's a, a button on the top that says just FX. And for some reason, I've got nothing but Hall reverbs here. Ordinarily, you'd want different effects. Uh, I have no idea how that happened. As you're running the show, uh, there are certain preset uh, arrangements that are going to be coming up again and again. And so with uh, a digital rack mount mixer, one of the really useful things is that you can set how you want things up at different moments in time and save them as snapshots. So one snapshot might be uh, when the band is up. Another snapshot might be when someone's standing at the pulpit mic. Another snapshot might be when someone is, uh, uh, when, when, when no one's on stage and you've just got the, the, the computer playing music. Different scenarios, you can predefine them and then just move to that preset scenario uh, with a couple of clicks. So when we're using snapshots, we want to predefine things. Now, uh, you might have three or four basic layouts that you have that you typically would use, but let's say you want to really customize something because for a particular song, 
someone who's not the 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 lead singer is going to be singing lead and so you're going to want a different mic to have different eq settings to have different levels for everything to be switched around well with a snapshot you can program one of the snapshots for that other song name it for the song and then you know when it's time for that song there's a snapshot perfectly uh set up for that particular song so this is how you do that then you can also save not only snapshots but scenes and so a scene is uh, a series of snapshots and mixer settings uh, and so if you've got two different church services for example and one wants things set up one particular way and another wants things set up another way or you've got two different bands and they've got a different sound tech and so every second service everything changes with a scene you can set up everything at your rehearsal get it all laid out exactly like you like it and then save that as a scene then when you reload the scene all of your snapshots all of your settings everything that you did at the rehearsal will instantly come back into the mixer and so using scenes uh, you can save stuff and then recall it so that one group can do their thing save it all and then somebody else can come in and completely change everything else around save it all and each of them can record can recall that information anytime they like you can also uh, redo your routing uh, and say if you want uh, channel one uh, to uh, be going somewhere else uh, from the inputs other than the normal channel one uh, and so ordinarily you wouldn't mess with this but you have the option right on the app uh, to make whatever changes you hear you want to make here's your writing control over your outputs so you can uh, decide where stuff goes and now uh, I've clicked on the settings tab here and so now we can look at our preferences monitor audio MIDI network layers and scribble strips ordinarily again you wouldn't want to mess with this but here you can set up uh, your monitor to make sure that uh, you have all of this uh, exactly how it is that you want it here is the audio MIDI MIDI setup if MIDI is your thing this is where you get access to everything that you might want for MIDI I am NOT a MIDI person and so I just leave all of this well enough alone here's all your network stuff so if you need to change uh, the Wi-Fi client or uh, the LAN settings or the access point settings all of that can be done right here and you can edit your layers so if you're not happy with how the buttons on the right hand side are laid out you can change them you can add new ones and so you can make a layer that has only uh, channels one through three plus your auxiliary plus two effect sends and two dca groups you can customize it to be exactly what you want so if you've got a few channels that are particularly important to you and th that are the ones that you're generally going to want to change you can customize a layer to be exactly what it is that you want to see and finally we have our scribble strips so if on channel one you want to write in the name of the person who is playing on that channel uh, and change their color to be something more appropriate for them you can do that right here and then when you make a change on the scribble strips uh, that's going to be affected on all of the different devices that you use to look at that particular channel and that is the layout of the xair app if you have any questions please let me know and please check my other videos uh, for much more detail on how to make use of all of these settings